Okay, great morning everybody. Welcome back to the PT on Ice uh, daily show. Your daily PT uh, 15 minute commute to work podcast download or Facebook live if you're joining us. So thanks so much for being on. Um, if you catch you live, if I see your comments, I'll circle back around at the end and say good morning to you guys as well. My name is Mitch Babcock. I'm a faculty for the fitness athlete division. Our two online courses, our essential foundations and our advanced concepts, as well as our live course. Good morning, Kelsey. Always prompt at the 830 mark, as well as our live fitness athlete course, which we just wrapped up this weekend right here at my home gym uh, in Fenton, Michigan. So we had a great time. I want to thank everyone from uh, ATI that reached out to set that up and all the folks that traveled in for that course as well. It was a fun weekend, uh, one of the best in a long time. So had a lot of people moving and lifting some heavy weight and setting some PR deadlifts and power cleans and uh, just a really fun weekend all around for for our, ourselves as in faculty and instructors, but for the participants as well. So thanks for those that were there that weekend. So it is Friday, which means it's Fitness Athlete Friday. Good morning, Stephanie. Uh, I just want to touch on today a topic that we discussed a little bit in one of our lecture components at the live course, um, and that's the topic of uh, AMRAPs. So you've heard me talk about before the you know integrating these these CrossFit based programs or, or methodologies into rehab in the form of like the EMOM or the REMOM, which you guys are using a bunch. Which I got to tell you, had no idea that was going to take off in the fashion that it. If you're using EMOMs and you're loving them, please continue letting us know because we love to see that. Uh, tag ICE, tag myself. We'd love to see that and, and repost the work we're doing in the clinic with the use of EMOMs. But today, talking about the use of AMRAP. So first, let's define what an AMRAP is. AMRAP is as many reps or rounds as possible, right? And so that's just your, your could be a set to failure. It could be a prescribed time domain, right, where you give somebody um, a set of two, three, or four exercises, and you have them do as many rounds of that as they can get in under a 10 minute clock, right? For example, that would be as many rounds as possible. Another example, which I wanna hit on today, is if I wanted you to do as many reps as possible in AMRAP of squats, of back squats, right? And we're gonna use this theory of using an AMRAP set or a, a, a set to failure, essentially, right? Um, as auto regulation or as like guess and check work for your exercise loading and dosage. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. How many times do you get somebody uh, and you got them out in the gym, you're working with them and you, let's say you want to, you want to load up, you want to load them up, right? We want to get them heavy enough, but we can't test a one rep max, right? Cause that's not feasible. And, and you can also, cause they're coming to you in pain or they've got something going on and to load up the bar and find a one rep max percentage for them um, is not feasible. And to base it off a of one rep max when they weren't in pain, their most recent one rep max, isn't always accurate as well, right? Because that's not what they're going to be able to, to show you in their current state. So we've got to figure out, so we've almost got to do a little guesswork here. We've got to put a load on the bar that we know is going to be sub-maximal, but we want it to be to a percentage heavy enough that's going to cause adaptation. So in your first session, let's take, for example, we're back squatting. We want to get this, this athlete better and stronger at the back squat. We want to increase their threshold and their load tolerance in the back squat. So specificity tells us we're going to back squat. And we write on the whiteboard, we say, hey, we want four, four really good sets of back squats today. That's what we're going for. And over the course of those four sets, you can approach this two different ways. You can say, we're going to build up. We're going to do four sets of five, and we're going to build up until we find a heavy, tolerable set of five. That's one way to do it, and you may get close to that, but your only productive set may have been that last set, right? So you did four sets, three of them were considered warm-up sets, and then one of them may have been close enough to the load that we really wanted to be at for the whole time. That's one option. The other option is to put your flag on the ground and say, we're going to do four sets of five, and we're going to do it at 155 pounds. And on that fourth set, I'm going to have you turn it into an AMRAP set. So here's what I mean. We did four sets of five. I want that load to be heavy enough that it's going to cause, it's going to be challenging to you. So I'm going to give that athlete a, a, an RPE-based rating, RPE, rate of perceived exertion, right? And what we know from one of the, cur the current literature is that if we help athletes define RPE in terms of barbell movements, RPE as it correlates to how many reps they had left in the tank or reps in reserve, right, that it's a pretty accurate formula that corresponds really well with barbell velocity and true one rep max percentages, right? If you want to dig up more on this, look up the name Mike Zordos, Z-O-U-R-D-O-S, Mike Zordos. 
um, and just type in auto regulation or type in reps and reserve. Uh, there's a number of papers that are looking at the, the utilization of reps and reserve RPE correlation in the back squat, in the bench press, and in other other lifts as well with experienced lifters. So there's some good information out there of saying, hey, if you ask your athlete, I want this set to be about a seven, an RPE of seven. What that means is that there should be about three reps, reps left in the tank, right? I'm having you do a set of five, an RPE of seven tells me you should have about three more. If I really pushed you, you could squeeze out eight, but not like 15, right? That lets us know that we're at a dosage on that barbell with, with a load weight that's productive, that's gonna create adaptation, that's gonna get us where we wanna get. So when we're working with an athlete, this is kind of how we map this out. We write it on the whiteboard. We say, okay, John, I want you to do four sets of five on back squat. I'm not exactly sure what load you're gonna be able to tolerate. But this is session one, and what I need to be able to do is, is put a flag in the ground and say, look, this is our starting point, and we'll make adjustments from here, right? Four sets of five at 155 pounds. On that fourth set, though, you're going to take it to failure. Now, I am anticipating that 155 for you is at an RP of about seven, which means that you should be able to squeak out about two to three more reps afterwards, right? But we're going to test and find out with that AMREP set how many you really could have done. John says, okay, sounds good. We do our first three sets. We approach that fourth set. John, okay, remember, you're going to do this as many times as you can. Go ahead and get started. He does that fourth set. And on an RPE of seven, when I was hoping that he maybe could have gotten three more reps than what I prescribed, he went ahead and did 15, right? So he did 10 more reps than what I was anticipating, right? Or than what we, we prescribed for, and another eight reps more than what I was anticipating, right? That lets us know that the 155 that I chose was far underdosed, okay? Not, not a huge problem, right? You are not expected to get session one perfectly right when it comes to exercise dosage. You're not. But you are expected to have a way to figure out if your loading is appropriate enough for session two, three, and four. If you just keep like, if you thought 155 was good and next week you had them do 165 and the week after that you had them do 175 and in your head you're like, yeah, look at me, I'm progressively loading. Like we're getting heavier as the weeks go on. When in reality, he had way more in the tank and he was just doing them and he didn't really have a way to tell you how much or how much more stronger he really was or how much more load he could have tolerated. The AMRAP set is your way to auto-regulate within a training session and be able to modify and experiment with those training variables of figuring out if what I have on the bar is exactly what this athlete needs right now, right? So now, what do I do? John just did what I thought a set of five, maybe could have got eight reps, got 15 reps in, right? What do I do for next week? Do I only jump five or 10 pounds? No, session two, dude, we're making a big jump. 155 sold you way short. I want next week all four sets at 185. And then we're gonna do another AMRAP set on that fourth set again, and we're gonna figure out where we're at from there, right? Okay, fast forward with session two. We're squatting again, progressive overload. We've got much more weight on the bar. We got 30 more pounds on the bar. Four sets of five. I wanted to get at an RP of about seven, which means you've probably got three more reps in the tank. Fourth and final set, I have you do an AMRAP set, and you do nine reps, okay? So that's pretty close. I prescribed five an RP of seven, which means you could have gotten eight, and to test that theory, you got nine. It lets us know that 185 pounds was pretty accurate from a percentage base and a bar velocity standpoint of what your true one rep max would be based around, right? So now I've got something I can work with. Okay, 185 is pretty productive when it comes to five reps at an RP of seven. And now I can start to use like a traditional uh, training load based chart to make adjustments and to maybe do sets of three at a heavier percentage or sets of 10 at a lighter percentage. I can make those adjustments and changes with the load on the bar once I have that information that, hey, you know, now I know where you're currently at based on your symptoms and your threshold and everything like that. But that's how you would utilize an AMRAP set as a way of figuring it out. Now, this is not just talk. Alan literally did this last night and we were laughing at the whiteboard. Um, he had a, a younger patient in. He was a sophomore in high school, um, and he was working with him, and kind of an introverted kid, you know, quiet, but just, you know, probably just being super respectful. Alan's really intimidating, right, those glasses he's got. And so he's working with him, and he's dosing him, and he's doing this sort of thing, and he's like, you know, I, I hope this is heavy enough. You know, what we're going to do is do an AMRAP set. And he did 19 reps where Alan was only prescribing eight. He was doing four sets of eight, 
and he did an AMRAP set of 19. And so we got laughing about like, man, kind of undercooked that one a little bit, right? Like what I thought he was struggling with and I kept asking him, how's that feel? How's that feel? You know, it feels good. Does it feel heavy enough? Yeah, it feels heavy, you know, but like didn't really have way, uh, ways to define that, define what heavy means, how heavy, how heavy should it be? Um, and Alan didn't have a, a good way to communicate that until he did the AMRAP set, until he did, okay, do as many as you can do, uh, you know, r one rep up until failure and show me where you're at. And then he did 19. It's like, okay, okay, now you've shown your cards a little bit. Now I know next time we do this drill, you can handle a lot more weight, right? Remember, guys, I think too many of us get caught up in trying to be perfect on session one with our dosage. We're trying to nail it right out the gate, like, it's going to be 20 pounds is going to be perfect for you or 200 pounds is going to be perfect for you. We don't have to be perfect on, on day one. You can use these sets to kind of climb up and say, hey, we're going to find a heavy set of five over the course of five total sets. Or you can say, this is the load I want to start with. On your last set, you're going to show me if that's really good or not. If that's dialed in, if that's individualized and tailored to you. And if you show me that you dominated it and that you crushed it, I have good information to then make an adjustment and change that up for your next session, right? And that's what's important is that you get dialed in sooner. I use an analogy of like sighting in a gun for the first time, which it doesn't matter if you, you can get the analogy, right? So you got the bullseye out there, you got this brand new, you know, brand new rifle for hunting season. It's a big deal. Michigan's kicking off hunting season pretty, pretty soon up here. And, and, you know, your first shot, you have no idea where it's going to go. You just hope that it's somewhere on your target down there, right? And maybe it's far up and to the right. You're not expected on that first shot to hit a bullseye. But you are expected to gather some information out of that first shot and say, ooh, I was, I was high and I was right. Okay, so now i got to make some adjustments on my scope or whatever on my sights. And then I do a second shot. And guess what? It's now inside the big ring. It's not off in the far corner of the plywood that you're shooting at, but it's now inside the big ring. Oh, okay. Well, two more clicks. Now I'm starting to fine tune a little bit more. Ooh, now we're inside tight, you know, in the inside ring a little bit. We're not perfect, but we're getting much closer. We're making moves to where we want to be. And then maybe on that fourth or fifth shot, you've made a few more adjustments, a couple fine tuning pieces that you're doing there. And now you're starting to really drop them in tight inside the bullseye. That's what we're trying to do over the course of session one, session two, session three, is really dial in our dosage so that every session thereafter is super productive and we can make sure that we're loading them appropriately, as opposed to just being like, you did the yellow band last time, let's do the red band this time, right? That's not, that is not good exercise dosage and not good load progression, okay? Just bumping them up the way you bump everybody else up is not individualized and it's not getting the results that you're wondering you're not finding in the clinic, right? So that's my little tip for you, utilization of AMRAP sets, throw them in there, um, use them as a good way to, co a good coaching point and a good way to take somebody to like a, like a mechanical, like technical failure on their sets, coach them through that and then, you know, say, hey, you know, what'd you think about that? How many did you do? How'd that feel? And now we can make adjustments as we go forward. You guys, if you are listening to this podcast right now and you are currently not signed up for Hump Day Hustling what are you doing? Free information to your email every Wednesday coming from Jeff and Alan and the entire team. I literally watch Alan just like peel through research articles. Is he right behind me right now? He's right behind me right now. That was freaky. All right. Uh, I literally watch this guy sit at his computer and just like weed through research articles on a just hourly basis to see, hey, what stuff is going to be most pertinent to deliver to you guys? Absolutely free. So please, do yourself a giant favor if you're listening to this podcast, unless you're driving. If you're driving and listening to a podcast, you've got enough going on, set the phone down, don't do it. Otherwise, if you're not driving, get your phone out, go to ptnice.com, scroll to the bottom, and put your email in. And I'll be looking for your email to come across so that we can send you really cool stuff like these Mike Zordos articles and stuff that will help you guys out. Okay. We've got fun stuff coming up. The only thing I can think of right now is that if you have been wanting to jump into the Advanced Concepts online course, if you've knocked out the live and you've knocked out the essentials and you're waiting for the right moment to slide in the Advanced Concepts, get it done before the end of 2019. This is your last chance to do so. Zach and I have just like three, I think three seats remaining, three or five seats left. I think it's crazy, but it's almost closed up. So if you want to jump in, it's starting soon. Our first meeting is October 6th. Yes. So coming up really fast. So jump in on the advanced concepts. Zach is traveling all over. I'm traveling all over. The whole team is traveling all over. Alan just did a nice little live video to kind of tell you what we got planned for 2020. 
Things are happening, but you won't know if you don't sign up for Hump Day Hustling. So do yourself a big favor and do that. Okay, guys, we're out of here. It's good to be back on the mic. Um, my beard will be longer next time as it is this time. So thanks for tuning in. Enjoy your Friday. Uh, use some AMRAP sets. If you're using EMOMs, continue to let us know. We will see you guys in the gym lifting heavy weights and uh, with high heart rates. All right, we'll see you guys later. Hey, thanks for tuning in to the PT on Ice Daily Show. If you enjoyed this content, head on over to iTunes and leave us a review. And be sure to check us out on Facebook and Instagram at the Institute of Clinical Excellence. If you're interested in getting plugged into more ICE content on a weekly basis while earning CEUs from home, check out our virtual ICE online mentorship program at ptonice.com. While you're there, sign up for our Hump Day Hustling newsletter for a free email every Wednesday morning with our top five research articles and social media posts that we think are worth reading. Head over to ptonice.com and scroll to the bottom of the page to sign up.